Okay, we're going to look at the concept of work in a little more detail and try to put a little bit of mathematical perspective to it. So, work, by definition, is an applied force of some object, you push on an object, and you multiply that by the displacement through which the object moves as a result of that pushing. So it's pretty straightforward. All right, you push a sled across the snow, the force you push with, the applied force, times the displacement over which you push it is what we call the work being done. So we can write that as work equals F applied times D for displacement. Remember those are both vectors. They're both vectors. However, the interesting thing is, when you multiply these vectors in a certain way, there are two ways to multiply vectors. We'll learn more about that as time goes on. But um, this particular method of multiplying the vectors, as we'll see, is what we call uh, a dot product in math. Some of you might be taking advanced calculus AP, I don't know. So you might have heard that before. But most of you wouldn't have heard that ever. All it means to us is that the answer to this, the work answer, is going to be a magnitude only answer. There's no direction in work or energy, which is actually quite convenient because it makes things a little bit easier for us. We don't have to worry about direction so much. But having said that, there is one important detail that we do have to make sure. In order to make this special mathematical multiplication work to get a magnitude only, there's a condition. The direction of the applied force must be exactly the same as the direction of the displacement. Okay? So we have to keep that in our back pocket. Some of you are nodding, but very few of you are writing that down. So I'm going to write it here. Uh, the direction... Okay? The direction of F applied has to be the same as the direction, direction of D. And if that's true, we will get a magnitude only answer that we can call work. If that's not true, we get other stuff that's not called work. So it's a very important condition. And we're going to find a way to mathematically make sure that condition happens every time. But for now, let's just keep it in the back of our heads. Okay, so let's take that and uh, let's do a little simple example of how we might do a question. Let's say we have a nice little box here, and you pushed on this box or pulled it with a force of 80 newtons, and you happen to move the box 10 meters. Well, how much work would you have done on the box? We say that the work done on the box is the applied force that you pushed the box with, times the displacement over which you pushed it. Now, look at the directions. This is the displacement, and this is the applied force. So they are in the same direction, aren't they? So we can use this equation without too much worry. And we would get 80 times D, or 10, and we would get 800 for this. 800 what? Well, to figure out what the unit is, we have to do a little bit of unit messing around. We'll do it over here on the side in green. We're talking about a force multiplied by a distance. So that's a unit of newtons times meters, correct? But remember what a newton is. It's a mass times an acceleration. It's a kilogram meter per second squared. So if you multiply that by a meter, you get something called a kilogram meter squared per second squared, which is a pretty crazy unit. So what we do is we say, let's call that something nice. Let's take a guy, French guy, by the name of Henri Joule, and let's use his famous name and call it a Joule, which you probably heard of back in grade 9 when you were doing energy and electricity and stuff. So the Joule is the unit, and it's a capital J. Right? Capital J for Joules. Now how much is a Joule? We need a, a benchmark. So we know if 800 joules is a whole lot of energy or work, or is it a little wee bit? So the benchmark we used for the um, Newton was that if you took an apple, right, 
and you lifted it or held it up, the force on an apple was about one newton. Force of holding an apple against gravity, right? So to figure out the work of a joule, if we lifted an apple one meter high, then we would use a force of one newton for one meter, which would be one times one, which would be one joule. So one joule is about the amount of work done when lifting an apple one meter high against gravity. There's not much. It's a very small bit of, of, of energy or work. So a joule is very tiny. So we often get big numbers for joules for answers. Hundreds or thousands, you know, or the energy you use in your house would be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of joules. Probably what we would call megajoules or some kilojoules anyway. So anyway, that's how we can get an idea of how much a joule is. But that's the unit, joules, for work. So the energy for work, or the unit for work, is the same as the unit for energy, because work really is the same as energy. Work is the cause is a change in energy. Energy is the ability to do work, remember, from the other day. Yeah? So would weight have a factor in this? Let's say the box has a unit for projectile or carrier. Would weight have a factor? Well, we're, we're using the weight of the apple to give us an idea of one joule. Obviously, if it was heavier than that, you'd have to apply more than one newton, and you would, you would do more than one joule of work, yes. In the equation, no. Well, sort of. Watch what happens. It's a good question. It's, if, if this box was heavier, would you do more work? I told you what the applied force was here. But what if I didn't? What if I sort of left it up to you to figure out the applied force? That could be sort of the next level of this question, which really is just unit two again. So let's do an example. Let's say instead we had a box. Let's make it, I'll, I'll use the same one for all the, all the other classes that I used. It was a 10 kilogram box. And we wanted to move it a distance of 12 meters. And there was a mu involved of uh, 0 0.2, I guess, or something like that. So if we want to move it, obviously we need to apply force. And we're going to apply the force in the same direction that we're going to move it. So we can do our little work formula. All right. What else do I need? Well, guess what? Unit two. I need a new, uh, new uh, what do you call that? Normal force. I need a gravity force. And if I'm trying to move this block, there'll be a friction force opposing me. And so what I have to do to figure out what the applied force is, is go through all the stuff from before that we learned already. F net Y equals Fn plus Fg, zero Fn. Now, this would be minus nine, 10 times 9.8. So I'd end up with a normal force of 98. Whoops, 98 newtons. 10 times 9.8. But I'm going fast here because we know how to do this. We've done this so many times. Then we would do F net X, and this is where our F applied and comes in, so that's where that number will pop out, and the force of friction. Again, when you push something, usually you don't accelerate. You push it at a constant speed, and then F applied goes here to the right. This is negative mu 0 0.2 times Fn, 98. Right? Remember, friction is mu Fn. And you multiply those together, you get 19.1.6 uh, What is that? Oh, it's 98. I did that again, right here. 98 newtons is the normal force from up here. Last block, going too fast. So it is 19.6, um, right? Okay, so we have 19.6. We move it to the other side. That's our applied force. So guess what we do? We do work equals force applied times the displacement. And now we know it's 19.6. And we said we were going to push it 12 meters. So we multiply those two things together to see what we get. 19.6 times 12 is about 235-ish joules of work done. So really, this new stuff is a stupid little thing if you multiply at the end of doing all the unit two stuff. So far, anyway. It's very simple and easy, right, at the end. The only thing that could make this more difficult is if I make it harder to find the F applied. 
So what I could do is I could do it like this. The F applied could be on a slope. Oops. What did we do there? We lost. There we go. So let's try this one. What I'm going to do is set it up, and I'll get you to try it. Your ticket out the door before you can leave is to figure out if you have a 20 kilogram block here, and you have a mu of 0.3, and you're on a 40 degree hill, how much work would you do pushing it up this hill if the hill is 8 meters up? How much work would you do? on the block and pushing it up the hill. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do it and then we'll just quickly take it up before we run out of time. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out the answer. First of all, let's draw our free body diagram. We would need gravity over here. There's a normal force here. We're pushing up the slope, so that means friction works against us, and our applied force goes up this way. So that part would all be good. Then we need to uh, resolve our gravity into its components, and uh, this would be mg, or 196 cos 40, and this would be 196 sine 40. What do we get for those numbers? What's the one with sine in it? Anybody get that? Nobody? Nobody? Cut that part. Kevin, what is this number? 96? No, no, no. I, I don't get 46. 46? Good. And what's the other one? 126. 126. Awesome. So 46 here. And then 150. Is that what you said to me? Right? No. Say it more clearly. One fifty here and one twenty six there. Awesome. Okay, now we got those. Then we go ahead and we do all of our our F net stuff, right? So we do F net Y, which is F N plus F G Y zero F N minus one fifty. So one hundred and fifty is the normal force. You got that far? Then we do F net X, and it would be the force applied up the hill plus the friction plus the gravity component X. And again, if you're going to push up the hill at a constant speed, that'll be zero. So this is F applied. Force of friction is positive, and it's going to be a mu 0.3 times the Fn, 150, and this is a positive, and it's going to be 126. So we work that out. This is 45, so 126 and 45 is 171, right? So is that what you got for your F applied? 171 newtons? Okay, so guess what? Work equals force times distance. It will be negative when we move it over there, but that's what we expect because our force applied is in a negative direction up the hill, right? Is that force of friction? No, force of friction is to the right. It's positive right here. So we're good. It's actually this. That's what you want to see, right? Yeah. That's the answer. Good. Now, when we do work, the direction doesn't matter as long as the force is in the same direction as the movement. And is it? Well, sure, because sliding up the hill is the same direction right here as going as the force is applied to. So we don't need to worry about the negative sign so much. We can just do work equals force applied times displacement. Now, if we wanted to be really precise, we could put the negative in, and the answer would be the force applied, which is negative 171, and then what's the displacement up the hill? Negative 8, right? And then the answer would come out positive anyway. So it would be 8, 56, uh, 13, 68. And that would be joules. So really, the new part is the same every time. It's nothing crazy. However, tomorrow, we're going to look more closely at this equation 
and we're going to add a little something to it so that it'll, be, it'll work for everything. But for now, that's good enough.